Actually, it's very interesting. I have an overwhelming sense of responsibility. Why? Because we get to discover canon, canon now, what took place after the G.I. Joe movie. I know there's people that like it and there's people that absolutely hate it. Um, my feeling is I'm not a big fan um, of the G.I. Joe movie. In a sense that it brought back, I mean, it brought aliens and monsters and people with, you know, tails and stuff. It, it's a really far departure from the 1982-1983 figures, that military theme aspect of it. I mean, my personal opinion, again, this is just me, I think it was the beginning to the end uh, until 1990. Four. That was the start of the downward slope. A lot of people checked out, but then again, a lot of people checked in. So again, to each his own, and that's okay. Now, we're going to pick up immediately. I mean, Scarlet is on the phone with Hawk and Falcon telling Duke's status. And that's where the action picks up. This is something we're going to look forward to in the future of G.I. Joe. I'm glad to show a brief sample and look into what very well could have been the 1987 Sunbow se season. So sit back and relax. It's been a long time, so we're finally going to get some answers. Okay, one cannot discuss without understanding a few things. G.I. Joe the Movies was produced by the 80s hit combo of Sunbow, Marvel, and Toei, just like its sister line Transformers the movie. And here's where things get interesting. Originally Transformer comes out in theaters and shortly uh, G.I. Joe was to follow, but due to some production issues, Transformers got out first. Now remember, you're a kid and you followed both G.I. Joe and Transformers. You brought these characters close to your heart, like Optimus, Jazz, Ironhide, Duke, Shipwreck, etc. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there and you see Optimus Prime die and a whole bunch of Transformers die. Hasbro did not anticipate the backlash that was to incur. So, facing this backlash of angry parents writing in letters how kids ran out and are crying, Hasbro had to change a few things in his post-production. All of a sudden, Duke, who was slated to die just like Optimus was, um, did it. So Duke's status was quickly changed. But then there's the shot of a javelin going through his heart and him surviving that. I mean, come on, man. That's not believable. So here we go. We're going to play the iconic clip. So here we go. We're going to pick up the action immediately right after the movie ended. So you see images of Gilobulus and Cobra La, just uh, visions of them. And you see Duke on his bed, still in his coma, and he's having these images in his coma. Serpentor appears. I mean, he's just having all of, like, he's having a nightmare, essentially, while he's in his coma. And he keeps repeating the word Cobra, Cobra, and he keeps like intensifying and building up. And then he sees, you know, the Cobra snake 
he wakes up from his coma screaming, Cobra, like, you know, like this is what shoots him out of his coma. Immediately, Scarlet is there, Snake Eyes is there. And I think they're at either Snake Eyes' cabin or this is Duke's place. The one thing is we see Scarlet pleading with Falcon. You need to come and see Duke. He needs his brother. But Falcon, with this renewed commitment, is on the pursuit of Cobra Cobra Law. And this goes back and forth. He's like, you know, I have to complete this mission. I failed Duke earlier. I'm not going to fail him again. And he has this, you know, perception. Meanwhile, we look at, you know, where the battlefield took place. And this is, you know, after, at the final end when they're on the mountain of Cobra La and the snow and everything. You all remember that. So we see this figure going into this tunnel and, you know, they have this light and they're going down and you see the nemesis enforcer uh, carcass on the ground. And yep, that is nemesis enforcer down there. And uh, <laughs> he's the worst for wear. So the figure is none other than Pythona. And she's removing this ruby from um, nemesis enforcer's carcass. So again... This is all just to set up what we're going to look forward to in the future. So we're going to find out what happens in, um, you know, the full story from what happened after G.I. Joe the movie. So this is just a little to whet the appetite. So that's my assessment. Wow, doesn't that seem interesting? It kind of got your interest, right? Well, this is part of the yearbook. It's the back ends, the second story. This is something we could look forward to from IDW and Hasbro and G.I. Joe. It's just a little, little bit, and I'm sure another miniseries will come as a result of this. But, man, I am hooked. I mean, I didn't like the movie, like I said, but still, I wondered, you know, that Sunbow season that we didn't get. So this is going to be awesome for us fans. I mean, we've been waiting for this. So stay tuned. And if you haven't, please hit that subscribe button and join me and our journey together. This is Shabu R.U. for Codename New 2 Vero 2 signing off.